In order to understand relationships between biological organisms, it's important to understand the Linnaean classification system. The Linnaean classification system reveals relationships between organisms partly because we use the classification system to group animals together into broad categories based on shared characteristics. So basically we start with very broad categories um, and then work our way progressively down into each category, narrowing the definition of that category until we get all the way down to the individual species level. So the domain is the broadest category containing the largest number of animals and then in the domain we filter out um, different kingdoms and then from within each kingdom we will so filter out different phyla and from each phylum category we will separate out different classes and so forth and so on and so in a lot of ways the classification system is a naming system that works through um, groups of animals um, in such a way that it filters down those animals until you get down to the spe species or specific level. So this is e easiest to understand by examining the classification for humans. You'll notice that um, for each of the levels of classification, I've filled in the named category. So for instance, in this case, the domain that I have listed here is eukaryota. So the eukaryota, or eukaryota, however you would like to pronounce it, um, includes all organisms that have cells with nucleus and membranes and organelles. So, and that's all, all organisms on the planet that have these cells. All of the eukaryotes, or all of the domain eukaryota, are sorted out um, into groups, into the next level of groups, which is the kingdom. Um, so, in, for humans, the kingdom is the named category Animalia. Animalia includes all organisms that are motile or can move on their own, that they have movement. And that distinguishes them from other eukaryotes like um, plants. Plants have cells with a nucleus, membrane, and with organelles, but they do not move on their own. So they are in a different kingdom. They would be in kingdom plantae. Um, for the classification of humans, we're looking at the kingdom animalia, and that really includes all animals, animals that move on their own. Um, so the next level of um, sorting that happens in the Linnaean classification system is the phylum. And the phylum includes all organisms, all animal organisms that have a notochord or a, um, in, the, in the case of humans, it's the spinal cord. It's a nerve cord that runs down the back of the organism. So all organisms that have a notochord, those animals are in phylum chordata. Now, I can give you a sense of an example of an organism that falls in animalia but does not fall in phylum chordata, and that is animals um, such as um, jellyfish. Jellyfish do not have a notochord, so that puts them in a different phylum category from, from humans because humans fall into that category of organisms with a notochord. And if you think about all animals that have a a notochord or a, a, a kind of a spinal cord that includes um, fish, um, it includes reptiles, um, it includes um, dogs and cats, all of those have a notochord or a, a kind of nerve cord running down the back of the organism. So chordata, phylum chordata is actually further split down into further subgroups called classes. And in the case of humans, the class that we belong to is class mammalia. Now class mammalia includes all organisms with um, all chordates or um, all of the organisms that fall under chordata that have warm blood, give birth to live young, and actually nurture their young with their mammary glands. That's where the word mammalia comes from. So um, they give birth to their young and they nurture that young with their mammary glands, um, with um, warm milk from their mammary glands. Um, so that's um, a subclass of, of chordata, mammalia. And there are other organisms, for instance, reptiles and amphibians that have our chordates, they have the notochord, um, 
down the back of their spine, but they do not um, give birth to live young, nor do they um, have warm blood, and, or, nor do they nurture their young with, the, um, with their mammary glands. Um, so for instance, reptiles give birth to eggs, so they do not fall in the cat category of mammalia. So the, the class mammalia is actually sorted into different orders. And for the, case, for the case of humans, humans are sorted into the order primates. So of all of the mammals on Earth, there's a subclass of mammals that are called primates. And primates are, um, have a whole host of characteristics. They are pentadactyl, which means they have five um, five digits on their on their hands and feet, um, and all primates have this. They have stereoscopic color vision, so our eyes are in the front of our heads, and we can um, they're they're situated in the front of the, our heads so that we can um, see in a stereoscopic um, way, which means we have very great depth perception. We have. Um, all primates have large brains. Um, all primates have a clavicle and rotating limbs. So if you want to um, use your arm and spin your arm around, you can um, make a circle with your with your arm. All primates have this capability. Um, and there's a whole host of other characteristics that really define us as belonging to the order primates. But all uh, there's a whole host of animals that belong in the order primates, um, monkeys and apes. Um, uh, belong in this order. The the order primates is um, further um, further sorted into different families, and humans actually fall into one of the families, Hamididae, which is um, a a small category that really only has in it um, what they call large brain apes. Um, so they are primates with large skeletons, um, large brain. The, there really are only a few animals that fall within Hamididae, um, and they, those um, animals are humans um, and um, chimpanzees, mountain gorillas, those, they fall in the category of Hamididae. So the Hamididae is actually sorted into different genuses, um, and there are several genuses in Hamididae, and one of the genuses is the genus Homo, which is a group of large-brained apes that are bipedal. And really, we're the only, humans are the only um, living bipedal large-brained apes. So genus Homo has Homo sapiens. And sapiens is our species name, so that's the individual species name. And generally, most um, organisms within the classification system are identified um, and named by their genus and species name. So Homo sapien would be our, Homo would be our genus, species would be our, um, would be sapiens. So we would be Homo sapiens. So one of the things that um, I talked to you about at the beginning of the lecture was that these this classification system really reveals relationships between organisms. So we can start to see how characteristics that organisms share in common may have a deep evolutionary connection to them. Um, and we can start to navigate that evolutionary history by understanding how animals are classified. So that's for next lecture.